So this question is all in the wrist. Well, sort of. Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Man, had a really good weekend. Looking forward to a solid week. Let's go ahead and just dive straight into the Q&A. This one comes from the Brain Physio. Kind of an odd name, but we'll go with it. So the Brain Physio says, hi, Bill. Hi, Brain Physio. Uh, any chance you could speak about why some people get an ulnar styloid process sticking out when the form is in pronation? It seems like the carpals are supinated in relation to the radius. How would you relate this to your model? Best regards. So ulnar styloid, okay prominence there in brain physio, I think you are absolutely on point. I think what you are looking at is you're looking at, if we could just say a hand that is supinated relative to the, the distal form, so so primarily the radius where, where we've got that, that relationship. And so what we want to recognize is how do we know um, what we're really looking at? Because this is going to be um, an issue. Uh, if we can't identify the orientation, we're not going to know what we need to do to restore best movement options. And so what we want to recognize is that when we're talking about the, the internal rotation of, of the system, so we've got, we've got forearm pronation, the hand actually pronates as well. And traditionally speaking, if we look at the, the uh, ranges of motion of the wrist, wrist extension and ulnar deviation would be associated with that internal rotation. And so if we are looking at a hand that is supinated relatively to the, the distal forearm, then what we're going to have is a reduction in, in that internal rotation. So this is kind of like having an early propulsive foot in the, in the hand, because what, what we would lack in the foot, we would lack dorsiflexion and and some of that eversion that we would typically see during during that maximum uh, pronation moment during middle propulsion. And so, so we've got somebody that can't get to middle propulsion basically through the upper extremity. Now, how can we confirm this? Well, so I came up with a little test called the apple test and it has nothing to do with the fruit, it has everything to do with abductor pollicis longus. So APL, apple test. And so the apple test is basically executed as such. So pay attention. So we do the, the Boy Scout sign. So we oppose the, the thumb and the pinky. We're going to extend the wrist and then we're going to maximally ulnar deviate. Now, as I break opposition, if I can pick up more exten extension and, and ulnar deviation, then I know I've got a concentrically oriented APL. And so that would be indicative of a hand that is actually supinated relative to, to the wrist. Now, if it was a negative test, what would happen is I would have already maxed out my extension and my ulnar deviation. There would be no change when I break the opposition. So then you know you've got a hand that is actually uh, capable of pronation. And so there is the difference. So, so that apple test is going to be very, very useful for you to confirm your suspicions that you've got a hand that's supinated relative to the form. Now, if we can understand this, then we, we understand that the solutions are going to be really, really fun because this is where we actually get to use arm training exercises, traditional arm training exercises that people do for, for whatever um, biceps and triceps and, and the brachialis and brachioradialis, etc. So go back to 1985, pick up your Flex magazine and look at the latest arm training article. And what you'll see is a lot of solutions for, for your, your shoulder, elbow and wrist problems. So what we want to understand though is when we're looking for these solutions um, is that the shoulder is pretty easy to identify. Our traditional shoulder ER and IR measures are very, very useful in this circumstance to know where our starting position is in regards to the, the uh, thorax and, and the shoulder girdle. Elbow position can get a little hairy because the long bones can actually twist and that creates some, some um, ER and IR differences proximal and, and distal. The thing I want you to keep in mind here, Brain Physio, is that um, when we're talking about end range elbow flexion, so that is an ER position, so that's your inhaled position. So I need dorsal rostral expansion, I need ER at the shoulder, and I need supination at the forearm at the wrist to get that full end range elbow flexion. For elbow extension, it's the opposing strategies. Obviously, it's going to be an up pump handle, it's going to be internal rotation, it's going to be maximum uh, pronation through the, the forearm and, and through the hand. So again, you get to pick your arm exercises, you just have to be able to identify 
where you are in space. And so, so using your confirming test at the wrist is gonna help you identify the wrist. If you know where the shoulder is, the elbow can be the, the resolution of, of those two. Now, um, if you see something that looks like elbow hyperextension, don't make the assumption is that you've got a, an appropriate orientation and this is just an exaggeration. What you actually do have here is a twist. So you actually have supination at the proximal elbow that is creating this scenario. So under these circumstances, um, you're gonna have to use some form of, of elbow extension activity in pronation to resolve it. So it's gonna look something like that. So keep that in mind when you're looking at, at the elbow orientation relative to the wrist. You can still use your confirming apple test to identify whether you've got a hand that can, that can pronate or whether it's supinated, and then you make your solutions from there. So Brain Physio, I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, please go to askbillharmon at gmail.com, askbillharmon at gmail.com, and I will see you guys tomorrow.